Hello, everybody, and welcome. I am Kat with Benefab, and I'm really excited, actually, to be coming today because I'm talking with a great friend and person that I really admire in the equestrian community um, about essential oils today. Um, so I'm talking with Chanel Reamer. Um, she is with RCR Equestrian, but she's also a certified essential oil coach, and she's actually pursuing her doctorate in um, naturopathic animal science. So she's a wealth of knowledge and is a really interesting person to talk to. Um, but just before we get started, I want to tell you a little bit about kind of what we're going to be going over today. Um, so we're really going to be focusing on, on the horses, but um, talking about if you haven't already uh, listened to our other video with Dr. Carla Franchville, she and I really dove into the parallel between um, pain and anxiety. And it was something that was really well received. You guys loved it. You guys have asked for more content. Um, so here we are, but I thought we'd get a new face and a new name into this and just kind of a new perspective um, to bring to you guys. So we're going to be talking a bit about pain and anxiety and that parallel, but even diving a little bit um, more deeply into it, what we can do to address both of those things and kind of expand on from there. So um, but without further ado, uh, Chanel, welcome. Thank you so much, Kat. It's such an honor to be here with you, talking with you today. Um, it's been wonderful uh, combining Benefab and essential oils, and I've been having so much fun with that um, for quite a long time. Yeah, it's it's really great because I think we, um, you know, for people who haven't, aren't familiar with essential oils, and most of us have seen essential oils, whether it's in the grocery store or through, you know, different different companies. There's a lot of um, companies that are dabbling in this, as, as we know. Mm -hmm. um, but I think one of the unique parts of essential oils that I have enjoyed the most is that we get, you know, you can have the aromatherapy um, aspect even if it's not for therapy necessarily, like I love to diffuse. I mean, I use my diffuser every day um, in my house. So just for myself, and sometimes I'll, you know, if my dog seems a little bit anxious, I'll choose a separate oil for that. Um, but so we have that aromatherapy aspect, but then also the topical aspect and using it, you know, using them um, for specific things. So I think that that's really mm -hmm. neat. Um, but before we really get started, tell me a little bit or tell our audience how you got started into this. So I've always been interested in um, the natural side of, of health and wellness, um, mm -hmm. which is kind of what led me to my studies. Um, and essential oils initially was not something I knew much about. I was one of those people, I have to admit, that was like, oh, okay, I, I couldn't really wrap my head around how something that smells nice is going to help me with my health but it is part of my course it's part of my studies but it was a study that I had not um a chapter that I'd not gotten to yet when I first started looking into essential oils and um it was really weird because I had all these questions and I remember speaking to uh, a um a homeopath about essential oils and we had the same thing like it was like okay, it makes the room smell nice. I don't understand. Um, and then back then, Google can be a great place, but it can also be such an overwhelm of knowledge, you know? Mm. And um, I had I had a horse with this old scar tissue. I bought him that way. And just over the years, you know, at the time when I bought him, I was told that it has no clinical significance and he's totally fine. Um, but it turns out that that tightness over a joint mm was starting to be a bit of an issue. And, um, you know, there's there's shockwave therapy and there's a lot of other therapies, but we, we just weren't kind of getting anywhere. So um, somebody I had I knew had mentioned, what about essential oils? Mm. And um, I did the whole Google thing and I got my recipe and I went down to the local health store and got all the oils. But again, I was like, okay, now what? Like, what do I, how do I put it together? How do I use these things? What, what? And I just kind of winged it and, and followed what I, what I could find online. And his legs smelled really, really nice. <laughs> <laughs> but that was about it. And I was uh -huh. like, you know what? It just seemed like a fad at that time. And um, like I said, I was jumping the gun a little bit in my studies. Like I hadn't got to that chapter. Um, 
and I kind of wrote it off. And then about a year later, a dear friend of mine um, approached me about doTERRA specifically. And I was open-minded about it because I know that's the brand that my college um, uses as well. Mm. And um, I had kind of shared that with her. I said, look, I've tried it. It doesn't it doesn't really work for me. I, d- I didn't have any results. Mm. And she was like, well, just come with me to your presentation. There's absolutely a difference with quality and just give it a try. Just try it. And I'm so glad I did because I used almost the same oils with a completely different result. And mm-hmm. from then, like I, I have been so passionate about it and I and I haven't looked back. So it's definitely made a huge difference about mm-hmm. quality and where it's coming from and education, you know, having sure. people behind me that I can actually say, yes, try this, use this. This is how you use it. This is how you mix it instead of, you know, kind of winging it on your own. Yes, exactly. Sure. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. And I love that you mentioned that about shockwave therapy and all these different, you know, Western approaches, because that's one of the things that I so frequently preach about is that it's not about going, you know, to one end of the spectrum or the other. It's about this integrative approach and being able to bring, you know, the best of both worlds together, both Eastern and Western medicine. And I think when we can Mm -hmm. do that, we get huge results, you know, when we can, when we can do that. And so I love that you mentioned um, that aspect, you know, whether it's acupuncture, essential oils, um, wearable therapies like Benefab, you know, whatever it is, I think that um, when we can take that more natural approach combined with, you know, something, sometimes we look, Western medicine is excellent. Like sometimes Mm -hmm. we really need it. Um, especially if we have acute symptoms at the time, but it's there to treat the symptoms, not the cause. Um, which is one thing that I love so much about your study. So don't leave us hanging. Tell me, uh, do you mind sharing what you used on that horse? What was the, what was the blend just in short? (laughs) I'm sure there are lots of (laughs) curious people out there now thinking, Hey, I have a horse with scar tissue too. Yeah. So the big, the big, uh, oil that I'm sure everybody's uh, familiar with is frankincense. That's Mm -hmm. a bit, I mean, that's such a multi-purpose oil. Mm -hmm. Um, It's huge, helps with, you know, antioxidative effects, cellular repair, that sort of stuff. So frankincense has got to be in there. An oil I had no, never heard about, and I think is a very unsung oil is called helichrysum. Mm. Kind of nickname it liquid gold because it comes from a tiny little like yellow flower and it's very very precious because the yield is low um and that one has also massive skin benefits so anytime you're dealing with um skin issues um old scar old scar tissue specifically Mm. as well or helping with any kind of regeneration you want to have helichrysum in there Mm. Um, and then another skin oil is your lavender. Um, lavender is famous for its calming benefits, but it is actually really powerful for the skin as well. Mm. So, um, any irritations, um, that one we've seen big results. So those are the three that I remember off the top of my head. Cypress was it was in there as well. Um, and now you've put me on the spot a little bit. I'd have to see what else was in there, but those were the three main sure. ones, the frankincense, helichrysum. And I think that that's actually a really good point to bring up. Like you say that the the yield was very low. So it's, mm-hmm. a, um, you know, it's, it's unique in that sense. But like one thing that I actually personally had struggled with skin issues um, back in the day and had looked, somebody had recommended, I believe it was Rose is what mm-hmm. was recommended to me. And I looked it up and first they were out of stock. Then when it came back into stock, it was so expensive yeah, um, and really hard to get my hands on. And I actually didn't end up uh, getting any, um, but I did, I used a witch hazel that was um, infused with a rose essential oil and it, and it did seem to help um, calm my skin, but just tell us a little bit of a background because I think from an educational standpoint, a lot of people you so commonly hear essential oils. Um, mm-hmm. But what exactly is an essential oil and why are they so varied across the board when it comes to pricing and yield and things? Just kind of give us a little bit of a background. I think that'll really help people better understand. That's an excellent question. And I'm glad you brought up Rose because that's one that people often see the price and go, <gasps> yeah. so just, just 
just a five ml rose. So this is this is it's not a rose bottle, but it's the size. Mm -hmm. In order to make five milliliters of yield in rose, it takes ten thousand roses just to make one bottle. Oh my god. So roses, like, not rose petals. Ro yeah, like a like, full like rose, rose blossom. Yeah, like a rose oh blue. Wow. 10,000 in one little bottle. Wow. It kind of puts that into perspective. So sure. um, what essential oils are, essential oils are a volatile aromatic compounds. Not every plant has, an essen has essential oils. That's why you don't have them for every plant. Mm. In the plant, they they help with protection. They help with with um, keeping pests away. They help with um, attracting pollinators. And we kind of say they almost um, have those same properties or benefits when we when we can ha harvest them and use them for us. Mm. They come from in depending on which which plant we're 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 distilling they can come from the roots the stems the leaves the blossoms like in in rose and why their their price is so different or specific and that's that's one thing that's a red flag if you see a brand where all the 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 oils are the same price there's no way like because there's some like the citruses Mm -hmm. And lemongrass, like the yield is extremely high. The essential oil is coming from the rind. It's mm -hmm. very easy to distill. It's cold pressed. So those are generally quite affordable oils. Then you have oils like your rose or your frankincense. Frankincense, you've got to be quite careful with as well because it's a bit of an endangered plant and you can over harvest it very easily as well. Mm -hmm. So a company like doTERRA, they actually go in and and monitor their harvesting and their crops. And if, if a tree or a crop is looking a little bit like it needs to rest, they will honor that because they want to make sure that the plants are healthy because the oils you distill from the plants are going to reflect the health of the plant. Mm. Um, and then depending on the company as well, like I can only speak for doTERRA because that's a, a company that I um, use and trust is they harvest, um, they grow their plants where they, um, they harvest the plants where they grow indigenously mm. because there's no way you can mimic um, that kind of soil, altitude, air pressure, humidity in a greenhouse, no matter how much you try. Mm. So like our frankincense comes from Somalia. Our lavender comes from Bulgaria. Copaiba is from the Amazon so you know, where, if you're if you're going to harvest your plants where they grow, it's it's going to be the strongest, healthiest plants. Mm. That then pass on those properties into the oil, and then that obviously you know comes with its its um, difficulties with shipping mm. and sourcing and international business. So that's sure. where you see those prices reflected as well as the the yield. Sure. No, that makes perfect sense. And I think that that is something that a lot of people struggle to understand just because they haven't been educated. Um, yeah. So that's actually, I mean, that's a huge help. Um, so I know you are a longtime user of, um, of Benefab, of course, and that's actually what pretty much brought us together um, <laughs> years ago. And I, you know, I want to talk about, I know we talked a bit about in, in the earlier part of this video about the parallel between um, pain and anxiety. And I know there are so many different essential oils um, you know, that you can use to, to combat one or the other. Um, and I think a lot of times we, uh, it's very expensive to get a vet out, especially during, you know, times like this, maybe people are shorter on finances. And so they kind of end up suppressing or putting the the pain on the back burner, then the, it turns into behavioral issues. And then they start chasing those rather than looking at, you know, the, the whole picture. Um, mm -hmm. So kind of dive into that a little bit. Tell me um, or tell us what you use, like what's your go-to for pain in equines um, beyond, and, and we'll talk a little bit about if, even if you want to talk a little bit about what you use Benefab wise, but, but especially with essential oils, what is your kind of go-to regimen? 
So my go-to for like the, if we're going to talk about straight up physical pain, especially in the show, in the show world or the sport horse world, you know, Mm -hmm. you see often people um, want joints and, and um, soft tissue supported and the, and you know, the, the muscular system. So that's why I like, you know, Benefab and the oils can work very well together. So, Mm -hmm. you know, post horse ride, if it's in the summer, our horses get washed down, they get the Benefab blanket on, and then once they're dried, um, they get their essential oil. So the ones specifically, it's it's kind of hard because a lot of the times when I use essential oils, I use it um, intuitively on what I feel like that horse is, is needing at the mm. moment. Because I absolutely, I agree with you, like we have pain can cause behavioral issues but mm. behavioral issues can also cause pain so if you have horse a horse that is nervous or anxious or, or always carries a lot of tension you can see that come into back pain and mm. and that then travels and you know it spreads if it's unaddressed sure. so we do want to address kind of all sides of things um so where do I start I guess let me start before the ride free ride <laughs> We have ba- balance. I know this is one that you're very familiar with because mm. um, I think Para loves this. It's my go-to, yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So we have like balance is our grounding blend. It's got mm. quite a woody smell. Um, it pairs very well with uh, serenity, which is our restful blend. It's got mm. lavender in it as well. Um, and I'll touch on that as well um, about lavender because it is on the drug list. Um mm. So we've got a couple of the essential oils we use do test on the list or they, they're on the list like lavender, chamomile, camphor. Right. Essential oils pass through the body very quickly. So we kind of say in a, in a, in a rule of thumb, if you're going to use any oils like lavender um, or chamomile, just stop using them 12 to 24 hours before um, horse showing. Right. And that's yeah. for, right. And that's if you are regulated like an FEI event or something. I mean, our rodeo crowd probably doesn't have to worry too much about that, but depending on if, if yeah. you guys have a list to, yeah. 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 Like the USEF or FEI. And sure. I did, I did have them on the phone and they said, look, if that's just for internal use. But in my opinion, if you're putting something on your skin, that's going in your body as well, or you're breathing it in. So you know, whether sure. you're feeding it or putting it on top just to be mm. on the safe side. Yeah. Um, but we've got a lot of uh, alternatives. Like your lavender is your main go-to for calming. Mm. But what I've actually found, um, there's another essential oil called vetiver mm-hmm. that is extremely uh, powerful for anxiety. And you'll actually see a lot of the horses will prefer it. Like they, you can offer them the bottle. Like they're very intuitive Mm. Um, uh, selectors so I will open the bottle and offer it to them and if they lick and chew and they're interested um, I'll put a drop in my hand and you'll see some of them will lick it right out of your hand and there'll be days where you offer them the same oil and they're like I'm good I don't really need that one Um, just a safety thing on that if you're not sure which oils are it for internal or external use in doTERRA makes it pretty easy if it says ingredients on the bottle that's not for internal use if it has supplement facts like lavender's got supplement facts on the bottle Mm. those are ones you can use internally so balance Mm. is one you would only use topically i'm getting off track as you can tell because i'm so excited (laughs) (laughs) i can talk about this stuff all day well i actually think though that i know you're about to get into the pain but i will say that is a really good point about like just just having, I mean, the, the horses are so intuitive and I think that we, uh, you know, as, as people we're kind of programmed or natural predators, but we're sort of programmed to go about it. Like my horse needs this, right. I mean, the same Mm -hmm. thing with supplements and, and we don't necessarily listen to them. And I think that when we do listen, if we just put out the bottle, I mean, if they need it and I've seen it with Para time and time again, there have been a couple of bottles that I've opened with him And I mean, he will go to the back of the stall and every time without fail, if I open balance, he comes over and he wants to get, you know, his nose right up to the bottle and he loves it. And so I think that that's, I mean, that's a great rule of thumb, you know, instead of telling your horse what, 
you know, essential oil or supplement or, you know, whatever it might be that you're giving them that day, especially essential oils, you know, what's good for him or her, just let them, you know, make their own choice. Um, I love that you said that, but anyway, getting back to, yeah, getting back to the, um, so pre-ride you said balance and then Balance and serenity together are very powerful um, Mm. for calming, anxiety, um, that sort of thing. Um, You can, a way you can use it or the way I like to use it is put a couple drops in my hand. Mm. So essential oil is extremely potent. So Mm. in a bottle of, um, okay, um, just to, to have a comparison, one drop of peppermint has the same therapeutic benefits as 28 cups of peppermint tea. Mm. So that's massive. You know, when we're, when we're using essential oils, they're super concentrated and we're, we're talking about drops per dose. Mm. So really only like two drops in your hand, rub it on their chest um, Mm. is because you never want to rub essential oils around their nose. Mm. So they have, um, it's wonderful to use essential oils around animals because they actually have two, um, um, what do you call it, olfactory systems. Mm. One specifically for hormones and the other one, like the, it's connect, uh, connected to the limbic system of the brain, which mm. is affects our memories, emotions. So mm. there is like cranked way up. If we think we can use essential oils for our emotions, mm. they are have way more uh, receptors. Mm. So you never want to like pack it on their nose where they can't get away from it because it could be overwhelming. So chest is a nice way they can get it. Trust me, they'll smell it from there and it's not overpowering like in and around their muzzles. Mm. And a nice way for us to benefit, because I know I get horse show anxieties, no matter how long I've been showing for, um, I like to drop like a couple drops along the mane and then Mm. just rub it up and down the mane. That way, when you're riding, you're almost getting like a diffuser in the mane, like as Mm -hmm. the the mane's flopping up in the wind, you can smell it. That's a great idea. I love that. It's lovely. Yeah. So they're benefiting and you benefiting. Mm -hmm. So that's my little bit of a pre-ride getting ready. And if I feel like I have one that's really anxious, that vetiver is incredible. It's very mm-hmm. thick one, but that's one that they'll lick right out of your hands. Um, mm. That's an, a great one for internal use. Mm. So now we ride. Um, we don't want to put any essential oils under any sweaty areas, not under your saddle pad, because sweat and water actually intensifies um, the sensation. Mm. So make just make sure you're not using any essential oils under the saddle pad of those areas we go ride we have a great ride we come back wash them off we actually do stretches stretches wash them off before we cooling them off and now our benefab goes on Mm. um we leave the benefab on and then once they're dry um we come back for the same reason that essential oils especially the the what we call hot oils like peppermint Mm. and deep blue they have a like a tingly sensation Mm. that is amplified when they're still wet so Mm. you want to make sure they're dry and then we've got um a rub actually it's called deep blue rub Mm. this one's got a lot of great oils in it for um pain and inflammation and Mm. it supports um that anti-inflammatory system so this one goes on tendons after after a riding session and you rub it up and down there. Um, again, when you're competing, it does have camphor and chamomile in it. So it's one that you can use at home when you're exercising for recovery, like, mm. uh, like um, joint and soft tissue recovery, mm-hmm. I would say. That's how I would use it. Um, And then it has a whole bottle of the deep blue blend. It's specifically the soothing blend. It was created for discomfort and relief. Mm. Um, So that's a great one. I lemongrass is a bit of an unsung oil because it's a very uh, affordable oil. I think it's one of the, the, the lowest price point oils and it has so many benefits. Like I don't even know where to start. Um, Look it up. Otherwise, Mm -hmm. we'll be here all day. Lemongrass (laughs) is amazing. But specifically, when you're trying to address tendons, this one comes up. So Mm -hmm. I make those of you guys who like your DIY, your homemade stuff, 
I actually mix these two in a little jar and that's kind of my tent, my homemade tendon rub that mm. I use. I put a couple of drops of lemongrass in a dollop of the deep blue and that stays in the barn and that goes mm. on, on my tendons um, post ride. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's a, that, that's great. And I know a lot of people love to put things together on their own. Um, and, and it's nice when you have kind of your own arsenal of all sorts of things, because you can make so many different combinations. Mm-hmm. Um, I know for me, um, I have this book and it has like all these different, uh, things that you may, you know, be struggling with. And I mean, it's my go-to, Um, Mm -hmm. I'm always picking it up and, you know, if I have a headache or whatever, and I flip to that page and it's this, there's so many different options. It's a great guide. Um, uh, but when you have so many different things in, in your toolbox, you know, you're able to do so many different combinations rather than every time something comes up, having to go, you know, out and and find something specific for that, you know, particular, Mm -hmm. um, uh, thing, whether it's to your tax store or to your vet or, you know, whatever it is. Um, so that's, that's really good. And I will say speaking on the balance, uh, so this mm-hmm. is actually what got me hooked on, um, essential oils. And I, you know, I, I've always loved candles and good smelling things. And so in the house, I just, honestly, I always thought essential oils are just something really great to diffuse, um, you know, in, in my house. And it was nice because I'm terrified that I'm going to forget a a candle, um, you know, on in the house and then I'm going to leave for the day and, and have one still lit, um, and something catch fire or whatever. So I had actually started diffusing essential oils and I had just gone to, you know, the natural store, um, in town and had gotten, I have no idea what the brand, I mean, it was just a store bought, you know, brand. And it, interestingly, I thought it smelled good. Um, I live with a dog and a cat who did not think it smelled very good. Um, and, and interestingly enough, it actually, my, my cat was acting like very sick and seemed to have Mm -hmm. a stomach ache and my, um, dog seemed really uncomfortable. And so I, I was, sort of wrote them off because I just thought like essential oils, if that's what they do to my animals, even Mm -hmm. if I, you know, thought they, they smelled good, I just wasn't very interested. And then when I learned more about, um, actually, uh, Chanel's good friend, Michelle, um, they both had, had come out and started kind of sharing with me a bit more, um, you know, about the oils and what they, what they were and all the education behind them. I thought, well, I'll give it a try. Um, and Para was there and he, if you guys don't know about para, um, go listen to our new podcast parables, life lessons from a horse, but episode number one tells you all about, (laughs) all about para, but he was kind of the redheaded stepchild, I guess you could say, but he was just, um, he, he was a tough horse had been through multiple trainers and, um, was really just, it was unsuccessful. And I took him back and re-naturalized him. And, um, right. Actually, I think, Honestly, Chanel, I think that was right about that same time that I had just gotten him back into my care um, mm-hmm. when you guys had come out anyway. And he just took to the balance oil when they and and they I mean, we'd probably gone through 10, 15 different oils. And as <laughs> soon as they brought that one out, he was all over it. Um, and to this day, I still use it with them. Um, and interestingly, what I started doing with Para, I was putting it on his chest, which I have to try the main thing. I haven't never done that, but I like the smell of it. So I'd probably love that. Um, but I actually started putting it on the Benefab pole pad. Um, Oh, nice. Yeah. And for para, you know, he wears it over the pole. Um, but he also struggles. I have, I have him a regular pole pad and then I have the smart version, um, which the Benefab, um, smart, anything of the smart versions have the magnets and, um, the far infrared therapy. And so the smart pull pad has two magnets that if you use it over the brow band, it targets the governing vessel 24 acupuncture point, which is, um, basically a natural calming and anti-anxiety point. Um, Mm -hmm. so what I would do when I would ride him, um, 
you know, off property, I'd always use the smart pull pad across the brow band and then the regular one across the pole. And um, I started using the balance on the pull pads. And then I'd also put the balance, um, especially when we go off property, he's quite an extrovert, <laughs> um, which if you're wondering, how does she know that her horse is an extrovert. If you have a horse that sees something and wants to move his feet really fast, you have an extrovert. <laughs> if you have one that wants to plant their feet, you have an introvert. Um, but sometimes with the extroverts, especially if you're a timid rider, it can be kind of scary. Um, and so we, you know, we're seeking comfort and they're seeking play. Um, but when we, <laughs> when we can put the balance on our hands and talk to us a little bit about that, because what I, what I've done is I always rub it on his coronet bands almost like I rub it into my hands mm-hmm. and I put it across his feet. But not only have I seen a difference in riding like that, I've also seen a huge difference if the farrier comes, if I do yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. So I teach a class on specifically the use. You've brought up quite a few points that I wanted to touch on because like there are so many ways we can use essential oils Mm. and so many different oils. And actually putting it on those acupuncture points is one of them. Mm -hmm. Um, And it is one way that you can use it by putting it under the forelock. Um, Mm. Coronet band relates to our reflexology points Mm -hmm. underneath our feet. So that's a really great one. If ever I've got like extra oil on my hands, I just rub it along the uh, coronet band. Um, Another way you can use uh, those essential oils, like you were saying, for your farrier. Mm. You always want to, if you use them for stressful situations coming up, you want to put it on like 20, 30 minutes beforehand. Mm. Because what can happen, even though, even though our, um, you know, it has these chemical reactions in our body, Mm. we also have something called that, you you know, your association. So if you keep whipping it out every time the stress has already happened, eventually you're going to override those those pathways and they're going to start associating that smell I mean, it's like stress. Pavlov's dog yeah 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 so, yeah. Yeah. so, <laughs> so that's you know you don't want to bring it up when mm. you know when things are already things not go haywire right. sure so if your fairy is coming out put it on when they're still in their stall and they're still mm. calm and and nothing's freaked out and or if you're going to ride and what If you don't want to put it on the chest, I don't have a problem putting it on my horse's chest. But what I've um, heard a lot of people do is they'll put it on themselves or on a, you know, on on their clothing or Mm. on um, maybe on a halter or something Mm. that they're smelling it while you're grooming your horse. And for Mm. most horses, grooming is a pleasant um, experience anyway. So you're kind of confirming that um, pleasant experience beforehand. Mm. Sure. Sure. No, that makes perfect sense. And I think um, being able, I mean, we kind of, I know now we're talking more about anxiety and stressful situations, but I think with what, um, in my personal experience and with how many veterinarians that we work with and and just talking to horse owners generally um, and kind of being on the front lines and and hearing customer stories, it seems that that anxiety sometimes it's hard to tell, like, did the pain or the, um, you know, the, the injury, was it a result of the anxiety and the tension, you know, that was being held in the body or was it, you know, vice versa, were they painful and, you know, had, had a, an injury that was in our eyes hidden because it wasn't a gaping wound, um, you know, that then, turned into pain and anxiety. So sometimes I think it's really hard to, to pinpoint which came, was it, you know, it's kind of this chicken and the egg sort of thing. Um, but to, to, to kind of speak to that, um, I think a lot of the times with, like with para, um, and, and using the pull pad, I mean, if a horse doesn't have, and you kind of talked about back soreness a little bit, um, earlier on, and I think just overall, even more than back soreness, sometimes it can just be body soreness. Um, like, especially if they're not holding their head in the correct posture or whatever, I mean, everything starts at the pole, um, you know, with the horses. So if we see them not holding themselves correctly or not ever being ridden in the correct frame, um, you know, then they can really, like, you really start to see that pain working, you know, back toward the tail area. So if it manifests Mm -hmm. itself in, sore necks or, you know, really sore backs. Um, I mean, that's what 
I use the smart scrim for, of course, and I know you had said you put the blanket on, um, you know, after hosing mm-hmm. off and they dry through it. Um, but for, in, in addition to the, um, the Benefab smart scrim, do you use any, um, I know you talked about the deep blue. So do you ever put that, um, or have you ever put the deep blue, like on the, the Benefab smart scrim to kind of diffuse off of it? Or is it more of something that you would put down the spine, like kind of walk people through, how would you use that, um, for back soreness? The deep blue? Yeah, the deep blue or whatever, you know, is that because that's what you talked about earlier or is there another oil that you would recommend? Okay, so one one oil just before we move on to that, that's still with anxiety and mm-hmm. that um, I actually wanted to mention because it's a fairly, I wouldn't say new, but it's not one that we usually associate with, with stress and anxiety is um, wild orange. So they've actually done studies with, um, oh, it sounds horrible every time they talk about doing tests on mice and rats and stuff, but they were actually, they did a study with wild orange um, with um, rats and they had traumatized them. It was specifically a PTSD study. Mm. And then they had asked them to do or uh, a certain sequence of tests off thereafter and they found the rats that were exposed, um, so the study was specifically for, for, for PTSD, mm-hmm. um, when they exposed the rats to wild orange aromatically, um, the ones that were had the wild orange were actually braver um, facing the tasks after having this traumatic experience than the ones that were not exposed to, to rats. So Mm. I started, it's a study, I I think I already heard about last month and I've started playing around with wild orange and Mm. I've actually seen quite a difference using it pre-ride for horses that you would say maybe have had a bad experience or are very nervous because to touch on what you said, um, on what what came first, chicken or the egg. I mean, Mm -hmm. if you look at the effects of stress on the body, Mm -hmm. how it raises our cortisol levels, um, it kind of puts our bodies in a constant flight, which raises inflammation. Now, Mm -hmm. if you've got raised inflammation, you like, I mean, inflammation in, in, there's healthy inflammation and then there's that chronic inflammation that can actually start becoming damaging to the body. So yes, absolutely. When you look at how it affects our bodies, I can totally see how having a horse or us, if you're constantly in stress, Mm -hmm. how that can lead to injuries. Manifest, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so that was wild orange. I just thought that was really fascinating because it's another oil that's really nice um, Mm -hmm. and that the the horses tend to enjoy. Um, And that's another one they can use internally as well. Um, but to answer your original question, how I use it for back soreness. So deep blue, I generally, I put it on directly onto the horse because it mm. is one that's more for topical use. It needs to be on the tissue and penetrate the tissue. Mm-hmm. And the difference between our deep blue, so we've got the rub and we've got the oil. Um, mm-hmm. The difference between our rubs as in comparison to other um, kind of topical um, muscle rubs is Mm -hmm. that this isn't um um it's not based in anything that's just gonna take care of like you'd spoken about in the beginning take care of the symptom Mm -hmm. yes it has a nice tingly sensation but a lot of the stuff we see off the shelf just kind of numbs the area so you Mm -hmm. feel comfortable but it's not actually got anything in it that that helps so this Apart from feeling great topically, it also is filled with um, oils, essential oils that actually stimulate and support healing of Mm -hmm. those muscle fibers and tissues. Um, Deep Blue being a hot oil, it's one that you do have a bit of a tingly sensation. You've Mm kind of got to, I would start slow um, with your horse because I have had one horse in the past when I had dropped it on him um, topically on those sore areas. Um, he actually would swelled up and had a bit of a, we call that like a raindrop welt. Mm. It's not a big deal. All you do is you put a coconut oil over it 
You never want to wash an oil off with soap and water because, again, oil and water won't mix and the water will actually intensify it. Mm. So if ever you do feel like a horse is feeling uncomfortable, just take a vegetable oil like coconut oil or olive oil um, and just dilute it with that. Mm. But what I do is um, I drop a couple drops along the spine or right on the area that you want to address and then massage it in with a coconut oil or something and that really like over over that area and then I put the the smart scrim on top of that so I don't the only time I put oils on the smart scrim or on a pole pad or with our dogs on the on the um on your canine jackets is for aromatic emotional use but when I'm doing pain, that's more that's more topical. Like I need the oils to get into the tissue. Get, sure. No, that makes perfect sense. Yeah. And I do want to just go back to what you just said, because I think it's so important. And from an educational standpoint, so many people don't realize what you just said about, um, you know, you were saying about the deep blue um, oil or rub that it's actually not only is it, is it helping cool that initial pain, but it's actually helping to treat the inflammation and it's penetrating, you know, past um, whatever. And I don't, I don't know if we even want to get this deeply into it, but I mean, it's penetrating past just the, just the skin level. And I think that that's something, um, I had actually, uh, have had a lot of education in the liniment and topical, um, you know, industry. And I've attended, um, continuing education and seminars and talked to a lot of veterinarians about this. Um, but this very thing, you know, people there, the, The common thing is to go to a store and, hey, I need a liniment or I need something, you know, and you look at the shelf and they range anywhere from $10 to $40, Um, Mm. you know, and depending on if you're a price shopper, your immediate reaction is to go to the $10. If you want something semi good, maybe go to something middle of the road. But most most people aren't going to look at it and say, hey, yeah, I want to spend the most, you know, uh, money here (laughs) and, and grab the most expensive one. Um, and I can't speak to, you know, all the prices cause I don't know all the research and things behind the company. But one thing that I, I do know, um, for a fact is what you just said. A lot of people don't realize that that cooling effect is coming because of alcohol that's in a lot of the liniments on the market. So that's actually the alcohol in there that's evaporating. So not only is it not actually doing anything more than just cooling the skin, um, which will sometimes give you that very short-lived temporary relief, um, Mm -hmm. but it can also actually dry out the skin. And you have Mm -hmm. to be careful about burning and blistering, especially when you're using it underneath something, um, you know, like Benefab or any sort of therapeutic, um, you know, material or a high-tech fabric or Mm -hmm. magnets. You really have to be careful with that. Um, But I think that that's something so many people don't realize um, Mm -hmm. just as, as horse owners that, there is a huge difference in, you know, the liniments and topicals on the market. And it's something to always keep, you know, in, in the forefront of your mind when you're looking to treat something, um, you know, if you actually have an ailment that you want to have your horse have some relief from. So I think that's a really good point that you bring up. And people too, because like we see it often with the people like this one will get compared, the deep blue rub will get compared to a lot of ointments that are, have lidocaine in them. Mm. Yeah, sure. You're going to feel great because it numbs the area, but is it, you know, are you just, are you just looking for symptom relief or are you actually looking to get to the root cause of Mm. what you're trying to address? Sure. No, I think that that's, those are all really good points. Um, So I think we could probably go on for a long time. Uh, This was really fun. I will. uh, So I'll just ask you quickly before before we wrap up, Chanel, is there anything else that you feel like that's just burning on your heart that you want to say or? So it's quite fun because I have like a whole bunch of oils in front of me that I wanted to talk about. But I think, yeah, like you said, we'd be here all day. Um, and there's so much you can do about it. And there's so much information mm. that like, I would just stress anybody that's interested to learn more. Like that's what I do. I teach on how to use essential oils. My passion is with animals. Yes, we I do people as well. But we, you know, there's a lot of things, especially when you're looking at cats and dogs about the mm. safety of essential oils. Like 
what to use when and how things happen. So I do want to stress that there's a lot of information out there and, you know, like just join a community that is, you know, plugged into that, that we're using it. I'm using this on my, on my own animals. Like we, we've got a whole big essential oil community that I know you're also a part of cat that where we can ask questions, we can, you know, be supported because it does get a little bit overwhelming when you're like, which oil, how do I use it now? What can I mm. use again? And like deep blue is just one of the topical oils, but like we've got frankincense and copaiba and turmeric, like we didn't even touch on turmeric. And that right. is a huge one, um, the essential oil um, that we use like internally for the horses as well. So, you know, there's a lot of education out there and um, it's really hard to pick and choose I know I what know. what we yeah, want to talk yeah. about no I hear you um so what I will do guys um to that point is I will drop a link uh to get in um, touch with Chanel below um and then we'll also I'm sure that we'll have a follow-up uh to this and what might be really fun is to have you guys write in some questions because it's always easiest to do these when we know exactly what you want to hear we know what I mean, I know what I wanted to hear. Chanel knows when she got into this, what she wants to hear, but hearing from you guys would be really great. So shoot us an email info at benefabproducts.com. Um, let us know your questions, thoughts, feelings, um, and maybe we could just hop back on here, Chanel, and do, do a follow-up to this um, in the near future. So that would be Absolutely. really fun. Absolutely. Um, yeah, I would love that, but I will absolutely drop um, a, a link to get in touch with, with you on here um, so that people have it. But I appreciate you coming on and um, I can't wait for the follow-up. Thank you so much for having me. It was so much fun um, and it was wonderful. Thank you. I really appreciate that. Yes, absolutely. Thank you for coming on. This was a lot of fun. <laughs>